Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Aaron. And today we're doing a blind rye flight between these four pours, just for funsies. Yeah. Three rare, kind of hard to find ryes, one available rye. How do they stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Cool. We do that. We roll the intro. <laughs> Welcome to the channel, bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. Before we get into our episode today, we want to give a special Patreon shout out to Tucker, yeah. the man that only needs one name. It's such a good one. It just, he just needs one like Beyonce exactly. or Madonna. Yeah. He's that cool. Tucker. Thanks, Tucker. We it really almost, appreciate almost, you. Yeah. Thanks so much for supporting the channel, man. Uh -huh. All right. Before we get into this blind ride flight, Aaron, how you doing? I'm good. What's going on? Well, as you can see, I'm in my comfy clothes, yeah. which is my happy place. We filmed a couple videos already today and we've had dinner. This is our last like filming of the night. So I'm like yeah. in my comfies. And you've got four rides in front of you. I have four rides in front of me. What more could you ask for? I feel like it's like Christmas. What, what, it's yeah. awesome. How are you doing? I'm doing good. It's been, we've like I said, a couple videos deep today mm -hmm. and it's also been a few weeks since we filmed yeah. we've been catching up life has been very busy very busy i think since the last time we filmed i've started waking up at 4 30 for some reason in the in the a.m because he's crazy i mean that's if you got to get those workouts in so that's the only time i have to do it before work and everything else yeah. we went and i officiated my youngest brother's wedding that was fun. A lot. I've had a lot. Had a great time with family and friends. Family come visit. Yeah. We've done a couple social events, which is so crazy that yeah. the world is kind of opening up, but everyone's yeah. still a little like, I don't know what to do, but yeah. it's been fun. We've been busy. It's been good. We are settling back into our filming routine mm -hmm. and we're happy to get into it. And we've had a lot of these episodes, what we used to call video podcasts. Now we're just calling them episodes to avoid the confusion of the podcast moniker. Yeah. But it's still more of like a podcast format where we have a little bit of conversational yeah. talk. But we've had so many recently that have been either lists, which are a ton of fun for us to put together. Mm -hmm. And we love watching those as well. Yeah. Or we've just been drilling into conversational topics about whiskey, mm -hmm. bourbon, rye, state of the industry type of things yeah. or not state of the industry necessarily, state of the community type of things yeah. rather. So we just wanted to have fun and do a do a rye flight. Yeah. What precipitated this was we picked up a bottle of this. New Riff single barrel, barrel proof rye. Right. This is 106.9 proof. Very excited to try this, mm -hmm. although we didn't want to try it solo. We kind of did want to try it solo. I did. But we had some samples here. So mm -hmm. on the table somewhere in here, and our order's the same, but somewhere in the order here, we have Wild Turkey Cornerstone Rye, which is amazing. Which, We've got to try once before. Who, who gave us that sample? Josh Fox. He also gave us Michter's 10-Year Rye, which is also in here as well. We've got Michter's Toasted Barrel Finish Rye, which is barrel proof. Mm -hmm. It's and like that, 112 or and so. And that was from? Berry. Barry Hawk. The man, mm -hmm. the myth, the legend, Barry Hawk. And then <laughs> we have the new riff in here because we had it and we thought about putting another rare rye in here. But you know, we were like, we got this new riff. We yeah. just picked it up today. Let's stack it in here. Yeah. So it was, we fresh cracked it, poured it in the Glencairn, let it sit for hours. A few hours. Four well, hours. We filmed some other videos. Yep. And then, so it's gotten some air into mm -hmm. it. So now we're here with these four pours and we're going to work through them and we're going to see what we think and you're going to get to see what we think and we're going to put them in an order. Okay. So let's get into it. Let's do it. Into glass one. All right. Cheers. Oh, okay. It smells like a rye. It smells like a nice, strong rye. Oh, I'm getting like a real strong minty note now. I don't want to say what I got initially because it's not good. Why? I'm not going to say, say it. it. Mm-mm. It was like, oh, the people want to know now. You can't do that. You no. can't do that thing where you don't say, Okay. I'm spilling. <laughs> I think you got it on me. All right. We're already off um, the rails. Initially, very quickly, I got like a tiny urine smell. Oh. I told you I didn't want to say it. But wow. it, it was it was as I was putting my nose to it, I got it really quick. Really quick. And I don't, that's not... 
Like I didn't expect that. I told you. We are really off the rails. I told you I didn't want to say it. All right, let's get into the taste after that resounding nosing note. No, it. Oh, oh, that tastes Ooh. fruity. That's a stout one. I like it. That's got some oomph to it. That carries over to the pa the oomph on the nose carries over to the oomph on the palate. I'm getting some peppery. Oh, you look really happy. You I got like a twinkle this. in your. That put a twinkle in her eye. Whatever this is, is delicious. Yeah, just sweet, delicious urine. No, <laughs> no, like literally, it was for a fleeting second. I shouldn't have said anything. Forget I said anything. <laughs> no, I can't. We got to leave that in. It doesn't smell like that now. Okay. It was literally That's like, fair. like a millisecond. That's fair. What do you? I think that might have been like a little bit of just the alcohol vapors. And some of the pine, probably like the the piney minty note, just tastes delicious. Yeah, it's first sip. It hit me really nice. Yeah. I'm into it. Yeah, second sip. Wow, the mintiness is coming through. I personally prefer bourbons, but mm -hmm. I'm finding that I really like ryes that are a little bit more complex. Mm -hmm. That to me right there is hitting me as a really really nice rye. Mm -hmm. It definitely tastes like a rye. It's lacking that licorice, that black licorice note that I like to steer clear of in less complex, cheaper rice. Oh. It's more on the piney, fruity side of the equation. Definitely fruity. And that's that's really nice. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into glass two. All right. Oh, wow. It smells like nail polish remover. That's exactly what I thought as soon as I smelled it. Mm -hmm. Nail polish remover. What's that stuff called? Acetone. That's it. Mm -hmm. That I can't, I don't I'm, smell anything else. I'm Surely there's that, yeah. something else there. It hits a lot lighter than it smells to me. Yeah. It's got a, it has that nail polish remover note in it. That's really interesting. It's weird. On the nose, it has kind of an offensive nail mm -hmm. polish remover smell. On the palate, it has a acetone but note. But unoffensive. But unoffensive. Yeah, I get that. That's very interesting. What is that? I don't know. I think that's like, I think it's hitting on that, that star anise, like that, the black licorice mm. note, but not in a bad way. Now that you've said that, like, that's all I can kind of taste, but it's not bad. Like, I don't dislike it. Yeah, that's a lot of black licorice. It's funny that I just said how I like the, the piney minty notes in glass one, mm -hmm. and I don't. Prefer like that licorice. black licorice yeah. and then here we are on glass two straight up into black licorice yeah. so very interesting let's get into glass three. Oh, mm. that smells nice it does smell nice that it, smells the sweetest of the three it almost so doesn't far smell to like me. a rye yeah it's definitely the least rye smelling of the three mm -hmm. which makes it the most appealing to me so far just on the nose hang on on second visit here I'm getting a little bit more. Are you? On the nose, yeah. I'm getting a little bit more of a piney smell. Not in a bad way. It's a, it's a quite a nice pine, but it's mm -hmm. kind of tempered a little bit with some sweetness. Yeah, let's taste it. See what it tastes like. I like that a lot. Oh, man. That is so I don't good. Know, I don't know what I'm tasting. That is so good. But it's good. It like coated my whole mouth. Yeah, what does made, that mean when it does it that? It made my mouth start watering. It's just, it has a very oily texture to okay. it. I don't know if I prefer it to glass one. I'm pretty sure I prefer it to glass two so far. Yeah. But I might just, have to agree with you on it that. It has a kind of like an oily, buttery texture to mm -hmm. it that it, it just but tastes it, really, yeah. But it doesn't feel heavy. Yeah, it's kind of it kind of dances on the palate yeah. in a light way, but the flavors it. are deep. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. Like you get deep flavors, but a light mouth feel. But, but it's coating. Yeah, it's very. It's like a juxtaposition <laughs> in a glass. I feel like this definitely tastes more like a bourbon than the other two do. It does lean more towards a bourbon, but it it's still firmly in the rye camp yeah. for me with that really pine forward note. Mm -hmm. Like I can drink this and envision a pine tree in my mind really okay. that is what i get more than anything else but hmm. there's also a lot of brown sugar there that's giving it like an anchored sweetness mm -hmm. but not an overly sweet sweetness yeah. like a lot of bourbons are yeah. so glass three is very interesting let's get into glass four. Oh. oh wow i smell straight up brown sugar yeah that's really it's like <laughs> if this is why brown sugar liquefied the majority of the sweetness that's there is a very brown sugary sweetness oh i kind of get bacon 
I mean, now that you say it, I, I can get like a saltiness to it. Maybe that's what it is. I'm gonna taste it. Let's get into the taste. That's also very coating, very oily, like glass three was. It doesn't taste like it smells in a, though. In a different way, it doesn't taste like it smells. No, it tastes. Honestly, glass four tastes the most like a bourbon to me. Yeah. It it's heavy it caramels. Tastes like, it tastes like a bacon strip. <laughs> yeah. I can see like a maple drizzled bacon strip. Like a brown yeah. sugar bacon to me. Yeah. It's got it's got a lot of those types of notes in it. Mm -hmm. I'm really surprised. Like if you gave this to me blind, I don't think that, I don't think I would detect that this is a rye. Mm. I might have a hard time picking my favorite between three of them. Oh wow. I On the second sip. I got a little bit of like a tire rubber. I'm getting like, like a burning right here. If you walk in, well, it definitely has that. It has some, um, it has a finish. Like I'm trying to talk through it right now. But that second sip, I got a little bit of like a walking into a tire store. That's very interesting. Wow, these are all over the place. I and I would, I, it's so much so that I would think our palettes were off had we not filmed previous episodes mm -hmm. and then once we found out what the blind head-to-heads were everything made perfect sense yeah. i would otherwise this i would was think, like our first pour of the night yeah yeah i would think something was really sideways if we hadn't had like a control pour beforehand yeah. so this is very interesting all right we're gonna take some time we're gonna compare these back to back to back to back. This is going to be a really interesting one. We're going to be a tough one. It's going to take me some time. It's going to take me a lot of time. Yeah. So we'll be right back with that after this. Aaron, what are your impressions of this flight overall? So overall, it was an enjoyable flight. Um, I had some initial, like, I feel like standout opinions, but then as I kept tasting them, they all kind of started tasting very similar on its own. It might, even my last place was so good. Yeah. So you enjoyed last place. Yeah. 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 How about you? What are your overall impressions? I had a clear standout first place. I essentially had a tie for second place, Okay. but actually, I, you know, I say that, but actually I, I did have a clear second place upon sipping a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So then third place just fell as the runner up to second place. And then fourth place was squarely in fourth place. I kind of had the same. We both had the same last place finisher. We did. So let's find out what that is. For us, it was glass two. Do you glass have two. any further things to say about glass two before we find out what it is? Well, the thing I said before, which was if when tasted alone and first, I was like, oh, this is good. But then I started tasting the others and then went back to it and then I was like, Oh, this is not as good. So yeah. if you don't have the others, whatever the others are, glass two is good. That's yeah. all I got. Let's find out what our fourth place glass was. Glass, glass two. two. <gasps> <laughs> it's Michter's 10 year rye. It's Michter's 10 year rye. I did not expect that. I did not. I we, thought for sure this was the new riff. We both thought this was new riff. So this, <laughs> wow. Okay. Oh my gosh. So this is 92.8 proof. Like we said, in a vacuum, this is a good pour. Yeah. And we both talked about this. For me, I gave all of these a thumbs up, except yeah. for my first place, which I gave a two thumbs up. Yeah. Overall. Yeah. So this to me is still a thumbs up pour. I yeah. like it. I would love to have it and experience it. By itself, it's good. I just got into trouble when I tasted it with the others. Yeah, so it's $160 retail. Oh my gosh. Suggested retail price. Secondary is going for like $250 ish. Oh my gosh. We're supposed to like this, apparently. So it was our last place pour. Oh my gosh. It didn't. So this is. I'm shocked. This, I'm shocked too. I'm, shook. For, I'm not even shocked. I'm shook. When I looked, I thought. <laughs> I looked and I. Didn't see new riff and I was stunned. Yeah. Okay. I, I was, I'm, I'm wow. a little bit off kilter right now. I know. All right. What are we doing? Okay. okay. We're going to do our first place. Our first we're going to do our first place yep. because you guys are finding out with us. So you had a runaway winner. I did. I had a runaway winner. You did. Your runaway winner was. Was different than yours. Was different than a mine. And mine is glass number it was one. was the urine glass. The one I said kind of had a faint <laughs> hint of urine. But again, for like a split millisecond, not even a full millisecond. Yeah. But it tasted so good to okay. me. Your first place 
glass one was my second place. Okay. So my first place is glass four. Okay. So Which is my third place by a slim margin. Because your last three were very close. My one was run away for you. And then two and three were very close. Yeah. All right. So let's find out what glass one and glass four are. Okay. So I'll go first. So you go first. What's glass one? My second place, your first place. New Riff Barrel Proof Ride. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. New Riff Barrel Proof Ride. <laughs> what in the ever loving world is happening right now? This, I mean, this is not happening. This is this, this is, is good for you. So, Rare Breed, as if you watch us at all, you know we love Rare Breed. But New Riff is slowly becoming like Rare Breed and New Riff are becoming my favorite. Wow. And this ride, I mean, this is astounding. Oh my gosh. This is astounding. You talk about being shook before. I'm super shook now. I'm shook. I did not expect it was, that. It was my second place. And it was so on the nose, glass one and glass three to me smelled identical. They but did. But on the palate, glass three was more astringent to me. Mm -hmm. And I'll deliver my notes here in a second. But my first place was glass four, and okay. it wasn't even close. It was a runaway winner for me. And I, I, I'm guessing it's because that tasted the closest to like a bourbon. It did. It had more sweet notes, and I'll get into my tasting notes for anybody that cares about all that stuff, okay. which they're wrong anyways. But they're also not wrong because they're they're what because they're what you taste. I get so. Ooh. Oh, I'm surprised. I thought it would be the Wild Turkey Masters Keep, but it's actually the Michter's Toasted Barrel Finish, which. This actually does make sense because I have found out that I really like toasted rice because the toasted makes it sweeter. finish makes it sweeter. Okay. It makes perfect sense. Is it the toasting what makes me have that bacon smell? Uh, it could. It, it adds just like that extra level of the, the second barreling, mm -hmm. the toasted barreling, gives it like that, oh man, yeah. I don't know. Like you get kind of the same thing on Old Forester 1910 or Woodford Reserve Double Oak, which we have also commented on like bacony bacon, type yeah. notes. So yeah, that that comes yeah. a little bit from that, and I'm I will, sure. I will say, there's a through line. This was my third place because of the taste. Yeah, it smelled better to me than my second place glass. Yeah, but it tasted a little not as good to me. I started out saying like this is the clear winner on the nose, but then I, when I went through with the flavors and the experience, like it just kept winning all the things. Yeah. So for me, clear runaway winner. Apparently, I'm a new riff girl. So this is welcome to the family, new riff. Yeah, You're part of the family now. Yeah. You're sticking around. So we know new riff is your favorite out of these. Apparently. The, the most inexpensive, fifty five ninety nine, fifty five ninety five. Fifty five. Like He's the, from the south. Fifty five. Fifty five. 55. So it's the most inexpensive of these four pours. Is the one you like the best. Congratulations. I'm not mad at that. And the only one that's readily available. And the only one that we actually own. Right. <laughs> and then so. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to you guys giving us samples of these. These are all amazing. Yeah. But this just goes to show you that like a regular average run of the mill product that sits on the shelf can go toe to toe. I did not expect they that. It finished first place for you. We were sure that glass two was last place. We were sure. We, new Riff. We thought we sure. that because we both have the same last place. We thought that it was going to be New Riff because why shouldn't it be? Because it's a readily available, inexpensive product. Yeah. So that means obviously the only one we haven't revealed yet is glass three, which is the Wild Turkey Cornerstone, Cornerstone. Master's Keep. Which was my second place. It was my third place. It's crazy to me that it was so close the new riff in nose yeah yeah i mean the new riff is 106.9 proof this is 109 proof but like this, so that's not far off couple proof points this the um cornerstone had more astringency it to did it, come across more astringent surprising side back to back side by side which i spent a lot i spent more time comparing these two glasses glass three was just more astringent mm -hmm. and not as rich and balanced as glass one i'm i'm shook i'm stunned. in like a, a good way i'm sorry still if we're repeating stuck. ourselves we're a little bit broken mentally right now so yeah all right let me my brain exploded i'll just tell bit. you guys you, you've already expressed your feelings on these so now that we know what these are i'll tell you the notes that i have okay so glass one my second place your first place mm -hmm. a new riff i said that for the nose it was the same as glass three lemon tea that's what i get on the nose lemon tea yeah 
And then on the flavors, I get lemon tea plus brown sugar. And then the experience, I said it was good, but I want more oomph. I just like more oomph. I want more proof. Yeah. Glass three, we're gonna skip because it's, I wrote on the nose, same as glass one, lemon tea. But on the palate, it was more piney than glass one. Glass one went from lemon tea on the nose to brown sugar on the palate. Mm -hmm. Glass three went from lemon tea on the nose to piney. I wrote piney goodness, I like it. Yeah. And then I said that it has it has the more oomph, but it's also a little bit more astringent. And yep. I preferred the less astringent, less oomph of glass one yep. over glass three. On glass two, the Michter's Tenure Rye, I said that that was the one where I said it was Cracker Barrel pancakes and syrup and you removing your nail polish At next the same to me. time while you're eating the yeah. pancakes and syrup? On the, on the flavors, bright earthy vibes, lemon, pine, and honey. Mm -hmm. And then on the finish, it had a pop of flavor, but then it tapers off, which makes sense now because of the proof. But it did not strike me as being significantly lower proof than the yeah. other pours. Glass four for me, I said, literally if I close my eyes and sip this, which I did, is a Ricola lemon honey cough drop. It was so good. I, don't I freaking that. loved it, but it was a lemon Ricola cough drop that somebody spilled brown sugar on. <laughs> okay. And then I put it in my mouth. Okay. I was so happy sipping glass for it made me happy i just get tire rubber you know what i got and that's what i got right yeah, is this yeah. the glass that i got that the first time around i think so but like it went away that's all i get now i didn't get that initially i wonder if i implanted that in your mind maybe but i said on the flavors i said all that carried over it had that syrupy sweetness that mm -hmm. was amplified and then had added depth and richness that the other glasses to me just didn't have makes sense okay. because of the second barreling with the toasted barrel and then I said it was oily and coating with, uh, I can't even make out my writing, an oaky finish. This was a super fun episode. I am super excited. I just found another bottle. That, I mean, New Riff is just- I'm gonna make him buy all the time now. New Riff is just killing it for you. For me, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just- And for me too, really. Yeah, for both of us. And that just kind of, it took me by surprise. Yeah. And the wild thing is like, as rare and limited as these three are, the New Riff, it's one that it's so good, but I also at the price would not balk at putting it in cocktails. So this was really enlightening, um, but let's get into some other stuff. All right. What you got? Our other stuff for this week is the app Overdrive or apparently Libby, Libby as well. Yeah. Apparently. We, we have recently gotten into reading again, which yeah. used to be both of our favorite pastimes when we were younger. Uh, hold, look, pump the brakes on that. Okay. It's not my favorite. Okay. It but was, I enjoyed it. It was one of my favorite yeah. pastimes as a teenager. Yeah. And then adulting happened and yeah. you don't have time to read. Right. But we've recently gotten into that again. I, I did used to like to read quite a bit. Mm -hmm. It wasn't my favorite pastime, but I did read a lot. Yeah. And I heard from a coworker about the Overdrive app. So we, not to bury the lead here, let's be straight up front. What it is, is just go to your public library and get a library card. And then you can actually get books to read on your electronic devices. Or if you're like me, audiobooks. Audio books. I used to read on paper. I'm a really slow reader on paper, but audiobooks, I can rip through audiobooks, yeah. no problem. And with your with your day job, you're able to listen yeah. to audiobooks. Yeah. I listen, um, I listen to a lot of content. Mm -hmm. Even YouTube, I listen to a lot of YouTube content. Mm -hmm in the background while I'm doing other things at work. Yeah. So for me, I really like this app, this Overdrive app, because I always was interested in the Audible thing, but mm -hmm. I'm like, do I want to pay a monthly subscription or then pay for the books? I pay monthly subscription. I, mean, I don't know if you know that. We pay monthly subscription for I don't Audible. Know that. I don't know why. But the Overdrive app, you can just rent your books for free. I'll say also, if you're like me, if you like epic sagas, if you like wandering tales if you like adventures and you want to go on a journey in your mm. listening voyage a journey okay then take me on a journey i'm gonna take you on a journey check out stephen king's okay. dark tower series okay okay the first book is called the gunslinger and if you listen to that first book which is about eight hours of listening time it's not I'd be surprised if even it might be seven hours of listening time okay. but i read this series read it on paper books like real books? 15, 20 years ago. I probably started it 20 years ago uh -huh. when I was in high school, uh, which my my 20 year reunion is coming up. So Ooh. excuse me while I cry myself to you sleep old, from getting old. But 
This series is so good and you kind of see Stephen King's mind work from a way that isn't typical of his regular books like It and Insomnia and like some of the books that are like he's more known for. Yeah. But this series is more along the lines of like your J.R.R. Tolkien, Lord of the Rings, okay. you know, that kind of like what I enjoy adventure that book, saga. Um, to be discussed off camera, probably. Okay. It's, you know, to me, it's like if you're into, honestly, if you're into Quentin Tarantino movies and you really like a dialogue driven, oh, I'm out. Not like saga I'm out. with some, <laughs> with some flashbacks and some storytelling and a lot of character development, then this is really up your alley. Okay. But I really like this gunslinger, the gunslinger book mm -hmm. to begin with. And then if you like that, keep on going in the Dark Tower series. I'm I'm 20 to 15 years removed from starting and finishing this respectively. Yeah. But I don't remember all the details, but I remember how it made me feel. And it's such a cool thing to go back and revisit. Yeah. I'm enjoying it very much at 38 years old. Yeah. I've, I'm finished with the first book. With the Overdrive app, I'm waiting in the queue for the second book to be returned. Mm. It's an audio, like, let me download the MP3 Overdrive, nonetheless. It's intellectual property <sighs> situation. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Nonetheless, check it out. Check out the Dark Tower series if you like things like Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, if you like spaghetti westerns, if you like Tarantino All films. Right. And I'm not gonna tell you what books I read because I'm a girl and 99% of you are not female watching this and yeah. you don't care. We can see the stats. It's yeah. 99 plus percent yeah. male. So, so it doesn't matter. I read books too. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's all you need to know. <laughs> and if you need to know how to support the channel, oh, yeah. then you can, I'm having a lot of fun with these segues if you guys can't tell. I like it. But if you would like to know how to support the channel, you can check the video description below for our Patreon link. We got all kinds of stuff there. That's our community element as well. Mm -hmm. You can get plugged in. We're a young but growing community, and we hope that it will grow into a resource, and we're doing all we can do to grow it into a resource. Yeah. We for, love the community aspect of this. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's We started the channel to as a creative project together, mm -hmm. but the community aspect quickly became oh, yeah. the forefront of what we're doing here. So, so we're absolutely loving it, and if you'd like to check that out, you can do so right down there. You can also check down there for our upcoming live stream. Mm -hmm. So we've got live streams going once a month right now. We like to make it an event. We can't do one every week. We would like to. Yeah, schedules it's a lot of line fun, up for us. Yeah. But with us doing it once a month, it, it definitely feels like more of an event. And it's something that we literally look forward to for weeks Yeah, to hang out with you guys and have a little bit of a virtual happy hour. I can honestly say that's probably one of my favorite things. If you'd like to join us, check that out below to see when we're doing our next yep. one. We've got some do good charity, change the world type of stuff that means a lot to us mm -hmm. that we'll talk about when we do those. And if this comes out after that, then we're just gonna also have fun. If this comes out after that, then that means this is gonna be before the November live stream. Which is your birthday which live stream. Which is gonna be my birthday live stream. So, so that's gonna be a lot of fun too. So we got all kinds of stuff coming up. It's gonna be a ton of fun. Yeah. That's it for this week's episode. Aaron, take us out of here. Well, thank you so much for watching this episode and joining us on our journey for our ride flight. Uh, if you liked it, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps us with the algorithms and pushing the video out to people, blah, 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 all the things. Um, yeah. And also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, feel free to subscribe. We'd love to have you subscribe. Mm -hmm. Again, that's like our favorite part is the community. Um, leave a comment below. If you've tried any of these rides, what do you think about them? Have you tried? I'm curious to know if you've tried the new Riff Rye. Yeah, because the new riff barrel strength thry. barrel strength thry yeah. um because that apparently is my favorite so <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what i got till next week guys cheers cheers